So what's going on guys, DIY Dan, Saltwater Junkie here again, and today's video is going to be an update on my sump and huge algae scrubber build on my four main displays all running off one sump filtration behind the wall. The reason for this update is my huge algae scrubber main drain bulkhead cracked and produced a massive leak. This is the first time I've ever had a bulkhead crack and produce a major water leak in the eight to 10 years that I've been doing this hobby. However, I, my water box that I built underneath my sump caught 95% of the water, so I had very little damage. All of my safeties on my low water level switches and over activation on my protein skimmer switches all worked. So this could have been a lot worse. We're gonna go over what happened. I'm also gonna go over a new sump that I designed and the design of the new algae scrubber as well. The overview of the sump and algae scrubber is about nine to 10 minutes of this video. The rest of it is me putting some extra footage of the build. So here is the leak that I had from the bulkhead. Now that brown on the PVC is from the small leak that I've been trying to fight for quite some time. About a month and a half ago, I tried tightening that bulkhead a little bit tighter to solve that leak. It seemed to stop the leak and then all of a sudden I woke up to this massive leak. Now obviously me over tightening the bulkhead trying to fix the leak a while ago is what caused this to happen. However I am not for sure whether that was the cause of the actual leak in the first place or whether it was because the tote was too flimsy for the bulkhead to start with. Here, regardless, we're making the new one out of an aquarium, so I do not have that issue. All right, guys, so we're going to go over the sump, and I'm just going to basically go over the design of it because I pretty much built it the same way I did my previous sumps. So if you want to look back to some of those videos, and I'll have them posted at the end of this one, uh, you can do that to see how I actually built them and put them together. I'm just going to go over some things I did differently and uh, upgrades I made, basically, okay? And then we'll go over the algae scrubber as well. And I had a couple issues with that old algae scrubber and I'm hoping that this rectified them. So my refugium is basically ran the exact same way it was. I am planning eventually to take these two algae scrubbers off my refugium so I can get rid of these two lights because I added an additional two algae screens to this new algae scrubber build. I left them on here for now because during the process of building the new algae scrubber, I still wanted the screens going, uh, so I had that filtration going. So I have the four main drains coming from the three main displays on the other side of the wall, coming in right here. And I have the drain from my 75 gallon eel tank as well, also draining into here. And a secondary backup to the 75 gallon as well. So that's what those six drains are going in there. So I added a live bed filter to this sump and it's doing pretty well basically all that's moving the media is the returns coming down into this area I do have a little bit of a dead spot I'm gonna show it to you back in that corner there when I put this together I basically dropped my drains down put some going to the bottom put some 45ing and to correct that dead spot I plan on taking this second drain and basically dumping it right on top of the water because that's where the biggest dead spot is and that should keep that stirred up as well. So to make the lid for this chamber, I used egg crate material and some knitting mesh and I used four plastic bolts with some plastic washers to hold the lid in place. And I drilled and tapped the plexiglass lid over that chamber for the bolts. So that's how I'm keeping my media in this first chamber. After the live bed filter, we're dumping directly into the protein skimmer section. And I also have some denitrator media down below my skimmer stand, along with some matrix media in a bucket behind the skimmer as well. I've got my heaters in here and my uh, salinity tester. I just made a little shelf for there to hold that so it's always in there. Then it's gonna come up over this wall into my filter section. This is one big change I made. I added an additional two filters to this system. I was having to change my filters once every three or four days. This makes it so I can go about a week without having to do them. 
One thing, if I hadn't had these rectangular filters, I would have went with the round ones, but I've already kind of invested in these rectangles, so I just went ahead and kept with this. Uh, the round ones, you just take a hole saw and drill a hole and set them right in. I had to do some very careful cutting and I actually snapped the first cap that I made while I was building this. In the filter section, I also have the drains from my refugium, my main algae scrubber drain, and my backup algae scrubber drain in case the main one gets clogged for whatever reason. I returned my algae scrubber in, directly into my filters in case any algae gets past my screen up there that the algae will be caught in the filters. I also supported the weight of the PVC so it wasn't all on the bulkheads this time. I don't know if that was part of my issue with that cracking bulkhead or not. After going through the filters, I go through my bubble trap and into my return section. So one upgrade I did make, because I use quarter inch plexiglass that I get from Lozer Home Depot to do my wall partitions, is I did add a couple gussets. I never had this problem on any of my 12 inch wide sumps. However, with the 18 inches wide, I was getting a bow in the quarter inch plexiglass right in the center when the water was high on one side and low on the other. So to correct this issue on this sump, I added some more plexiglass gussets to each side of the bubble trap wall partitions and between the two of them. And it has completely eliminated that problem. So if you haven't watched my channel, I used to have 240 gallons and I changed out to 175 gallon one issue I had when using 240 gallon sumps uh, is I was having a problem with my bleed off if I lost power. Uh, my final 40 gallon sump was like right at the edge uh, of, of overflowing. Uh, and that's logical because I've got three main displays out there. I've got the eel tank, I've got the refugium, and I had the algae scrubber. Plus I had the first 40 gallon part of my sump all draining off into that final sump. So with the 75, I'm not having any water volume issue whatsoever. So as far as the algae scrubber goes, guys, I was using a 30 gallon black plastic tote that I got from Costco for it. And I changed out to an aquarium. Uh, I put this piece of wood on here and drilled some holes to hold the light fixtures with just some zip ties. I'd still have to cut the uh, ends off here. I'm using the same lights that were in my old algae scrubber. However, I doubled up my lighting. I only was running two on each side of the other algae scrubber and I put four on each side of this one now. So that just sets up on it. I did make this wooden stand and attached it to the wall on the back side and made two legs because now that I'm using an aquarium, it's a lot heavier than what the other one was. Now these screens have about two weeks worth of growth on them now. This was one of my 40 gallon sumps. Uh, so I repurposed it to use it for the algae scrubber. The basic design of the algae scrubber is the same as the old one. I used four of the screens from that old scrubber and I built two more that were identical to give me a total of six screens in the new build. To hold the algae scrubber screens, I built a rack out of PVC board. I did have to add some extra PVC boards to stiffen the bracket. So I felt comfortable with it holding the weight once the algae builds up on it and it's feeding off of these three valves here which is this pump here which runs the eel tank and the algae scrubber my other pump is running the three main displays and i have a separate pump for the refugium so the reason i went to an aquarium is because on the tote since it was black i had to put my light on the inside of the tote if you haven't been watching my updates some of the water from one of the algae scrubber screens started spraying out and got on one of the lights and shorted it out. And I did not want that possibility of that happening again. Now I did correct that problem by moving the screens in further on the tote. And I hadn't had a problem since. That was months ago. And I already went over the bulkhead issue. And that is the two major reasons that I am updating my algae scrubber to an aquarium instead of a plastic tote. As far as the algae scrubber itself, it did amazing. And that's why I built this one and I even added a couple more algae scrubbers because my nitrates have been dropping 
ever since I put that huge algae scrubber in. They started climbing again that couple of weeks that I did not have it running in the system because of the modification. So I do highly recommend putting an algae scrubber in your system if you do have room for it. So the reason I used a plastic tote to start with was because of the cost. But if you actually think about it, that bin cost me about 15 bucks. When Petco does their dollar per gallon sale, you can get a 40 gallon aquarium for around 50 bucks. So in all honesty, it's not that much more money, especially when you add the reliability and the safety factor. Uh, I did put black plastic over my lines because I was using clear tubing and I didn't want algae clogging up my supply tubes. And this is actually just some plastic wire loom. You can find it in the electrical aisle at Lowe's or Home Depot. One other thing that I added to my new sump modification was this piece of plastic. At one point I had some water splashing on the wall and it did do a little damage to the paint. So I did have to sand that down and repaint that section. So I added this piece of plastic that hangs above the sump and hangs down into the waterproof sump box. So any more splashing that occurs, it's just gonna hit that plastic and drain down and not cause any more damage to my wall or my floor. So that was the main overview, guys. If you're interested, stay tuned, and I'm gonna go in a little bit more detail about how I did some things. And I will have the videos posted at the end if you wanna see more detail than that. So right here, I'm just trimming a piece of an old aquarium that fit perfectly for one of my wall partitions. This is the piece that I used between my live bed filter and the protein skimmer. Looking back on that, I probably would have done that one out of plexiglass so I could drill the holes and have the media flowing through the side of the wall instead of coming up over the top and having to put that egg crate cap with the knitting mesh. Right here I'm just sanding down two of the corners so it goes around the silicone of the aquarium that I'm using for the sump. I repurposed an old media tray that I had made for my protein skimmer stand and had to add some extension legs because of how high my chamber was in the new sump. So this is my top cover for my filters. I'm just marking it out so I can cut it. I use a miter saw or my table saw to cut all the plexiglass for my sumps. If you haven't watched my channel already, for the most part, I haven't had any problems cutting plexiglass with either one of the saws. And there's nothing special about the blade. It's just a fine tooth wood cutting blade. Then I just finished off the cuts with a jigsaw where the miter saw could not reach. Using a dry erase marker and my square, I marked where the partitions were gonna be in the sump. So as I was placing my walls with silicone, I could see where I needed to line them up. So I kind of temporarily set up my walls as I went, then using a tape measure, I would match the other side. Before putting the walls in place, I'm using rubbing alcohol to clean the glass and the wall partitions where they are going to be silicone to make sure I get a good bond. So I usually use an aquarium sealant made by Loctite that you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot that says it's aquarium safe. It's in a small tube. However, for a sump like this, I did use quite a bit, so I got a little on the expensive side. There is other products you can use. Just look it up online. For the most part, I would glue a wall in place, wait for it to dry a little bit, then put the next wall so the first wall would not move while I was putting in the second. So I just wanted to give you a little better view of the sump. So my first media chamber here, I'm not cutting the holes for the drains until I have it in place so I know exactly where to put them. There's the egg crate and the knitting mesh. There's the shelf for the salinity tester up over the filter wall. I did put a center brace under the filters as well to make sure it would hold the weight. Here is a view of the gussets that I put in to make sure my wall partitions did not bow in the center. So here's one of my old 40 gallon sumps that I'm turning into the algae scrubber. Using a large knife, I cut the silicone of the old wall partitions. Then I used a razor scraper to finish taking the rest of the silicone off the glass. So I cut the top rim off of a plastic cup with a razor knife and that was able to keep water around where I was drilling. So I didn't have to keep using a hose constantly. So I did get a little aggressive because I was drilling such a small hole 
and it was close to the edge and I ended up cracking one of the sides of one of the 40 gallon aquariums. So you still have to be careful cutting glass. That is one of the few times I've ever had a glass crack on me when it is not tempered. Once again, when I'm drilling glass, I always start at an angle to make sure my bit doesn't start walking and then I straighten it out once I have a groove started on the one side. For the most part, I have not had a problem drilling the glass with the diamond drill bits. So this is one of the new algae scrubber screens that I'm putting together. Using a cutoff wheel on a grinder, I'm just cutting the groove for the screen to go up into the PVC. I usually widen it a little bit more in the center to make sure I get enough even water flow. So here's a good view of the PVC rack that I made for the algae scrubber screens. I had to do the reinforcements to help hold the weight once they get the algae on them. Now this rack just sits on top of the ledge of the aquarium and hangs down inside. So I used PVC board to make this rack. You can get it at Lowe's or Home Depot and that is completely waterproof. I just used screws to hold it together and I recessed them below the top of the board so I could fill it in with caulking so the screws would not rust out. So once again, hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.